I am the Casual Spaceman and welcome to my channel once again and welcome to day 5 of my Apollo 11 week. Today is landing day. Today, 50 years ago, the Apollo spacecraft inside the lunar module dubbed the Eagle containing Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin descended to the surface of the moon and then some six and a half hours later Neil Armstrong took the very first human steps on the surface of the moon. To mark this suspicious occasion, I'm going, to sh I'm going to play you a video of some audio of the run up to the landing and the actual landing itself. And you'll hear the conversations between the astronauts and mission control. But before that, I'm going to show you a clip by Jared Owen, who explains really, really well how the Apollo spacecraft works for those of you that are not in the know. So without further ado, let's play those clips now. I hope you enjoy. Here we are in a parking orbit of 118 miles high. And just how high is that? Let's take a look. The Kármán line is generally considered to be the start of outer space. The International Space Station orbits here. Most satellites orbit between here and all the way out here. It's called a parking orbit because it's not high enough to stay in orbit for a long time. But don't worry, we'll only be here for about two hours. After orbiting the Earth two or three times and confirming all systems are good, it's time to ignite the third stage one more time for about six minutes. We call this the translunar injection. This is what sends us away from the Earth and towards the Moon. The S-4B is now completely useless. Remember, that's the third stage at the top of the Saturn V. The spacecraft lunar module adapter panels detach, exposing the lunar module. The command and service module do a complete 180 degree turnaround. The command module must dock with the lunar module and pull it out. In space, temperatures are a lot more extreme. There was a real danger of parts of the spacecraft freezing or other parts getting too hot. To prevent this, the spacecraft was now put into a slow roll so that there was an even heat distribution. This was called passive thermal control, but also nicknamed the barbecue roll. If we ignore the moon, this is what our flight path will look like. We're still orbiting the Earth, but we're in the shape of an ellipse, heading all the way out into the middle of nowhere. With the moon, however, everything starts to make a little more sense. At the time of launch, the moon is about here. During the next three days, their paths converge. Just to be clear, this is the Earth and the Moon drawn to scale. I animate it out of scale so it's easier to see the flight paths. So, the Moon's gravity changes where the spacecraft flies. This is called a free return trajectory. If something were to go wrong with the engines, the astronauts would still be able to get home. On the other hand, if all systems are go, it's now time to enter lunar orbit. This is called the lunar orbit insertion. As the spacecraft passes behind the moon, the service module engine was fired up for about six minutes to slow the spacecraft down. At times like this, they would lose contact with mission control because they are on the far side of the moon. Unfortunately, this is where a lot of important events happened. The guys at mission control just had to sit tight until the astronauts came around the other side. Now it's time for the main event. When the astronauts are ready, two of them get into the lunar module and get ready to land on the moon. One of them stays behind and continues to orbit the moon. Side note, the lunar module was usually just called the LEM, and when the command module and service module were together, they were usually referred to as the CSM. The LEM now extends its legs. After making sure everything still checks out, the LEM separates from the CSM. The LEM must get to a safe distance of about two miles away before firing the descent engine.
The engines fire up for about 30 seconds. This is called the descent orbit insertion. This puts the limb down to about 50,000 feet above the surface. Now the engine fires up again for power descent initiation. The windows are initially pointed down. But as we get closer to the surface, the windows will be facing forward to give the astronauts a good view of the surface they'll be landing on. The landing site needs to be on level terrain and away from any big boulders. There's a limited amount of fuel, so the astronauts can't take too long to land. And finally, touchdown. Now it's time to step down the ladder, say some historic words, plant the American flag, get some rock samples, and do some science. After the lunar stay was over, it's time to take off from the surface. But let's save that for part three. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Roger, Eagle, Dundalk. Roger, how does it look? Eagle, Eagle has wings. Roger. Looking good. Roger, Neil. We got a, if you give us poo and data, we got the loads for you. We are now coming up on 30 seconds to acquisition of the command module. And we'll stand by for uh, that event. Columbia, Houston, over. Houston, Columbia, reading you loud and clear, I'm in. Watch bye bye, Mike. Uh, how did it go, over? Listen, baby, everything's going just swimmingly. Beautiful. Great. We're standing by for Eagle. Okay, he's coming along. We copy out. Eagle, how do you read? Bye bye, Eagle. We're standing by for your burn report. Over. Roger, the burn was on time. The residuals before nulling minus 0.1, minus 0.4, minus 0.1. X and Z null to zero. Eagle, Houston, we read you now. You're a go for PDI. Over. Roger, understand. Right, son. One, zero, mission 10%. Roger, that's 20 seconds, everything looking good. We show altitude about 47,000 feet. Good radar data, altitude now 33,500 feet. We're 
still go, altitude 27,000 feet. Same alarm, and it appears to come up when we have a 1668 up. Roger, copy. Eagle, Houston, we'll monitor That's your Delta 8. Beautifully. Delta uh, 8, it looks good now. Roger, Delta 8 is looking good to us. Wow. Drop it on time. Roger, copy, throttle down. Throttle down. Set him in the simulator. Right. Tanks and things look real close. Altitude now 21,000 feet, still looking very good. Velocity down now to 1,200 feet per second. You're looking great to us, Eagle. Okay, I'm still on flu, uh, so we may tend to lose as we gradually pitch over. Let me try auto again now, see what happens. Roger. Okay, looks like it's holding. Roger, we got good data. Same type, we're go. 2,000 feet, 2,000 feet, into the ag, 47 degrees. Roger. 47 degrees. Eagle looking great, you're go. Altitude 1,600. 1,400 feet, still looking very good. Roger, 1202, we copy it. 35 degrees. 35 degrees, 750, coming down to 23. 700 feet, 21 down, 33 degrees. 100 feet, down to 19. 540 feet, down to 30, down to 15. Okay, 400 feet down at 9. Okay, forward. 150 feet down at 4. 30, rip the half down. They're, uh, pegged on, uh, horizontal velocity. 300 feet down, 3.5. 47 forward. Put up. On 1 and a minute. 1 and a half down. 70. That's the shadow out there. 50 down at 2.5. 19 forward. Altitude velocity light. 3.5 down. 220 feet. 13 forward. 11 forward coming down nicely. 200 feet. 4.5 down. Five and a half down. 160 feet, six and a half down. Five and a half down. Nine forward. Good. And 20 feet. 100 feet, three and a half down. Nine forward. Five percent. 185. Okay, 75 feet. Guys looking good, down a half. Six forward. 60 seconds. Lights on. Six. Down two and a half. Forward. Forward. Good. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down. Great shadow. Four forward, four forward, drift into the right a little. Ready? Down and a half. 30 seconds. Forward, just. Good. Okay. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Boat control, both auto, descent engine command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, 
Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're looking good here. Okay, we're going to be busy for a minute. After I'm on, take care of the people. I'll get the stuff prepared. Okay, it looks like we're mending the oxidizer now. Roger, Eagle, and you are stay for T1. Over. Eagle, you are stay for T1. I just... And we see you, Roger, and we see you venting the ox. Neil Armstrong reporting there. No difficulty adapting to the one-sixth gravity of the moon. Window is a relatively level plane cratered with uh, a fairly large number of uh, uh, craters of the, of the uh, five to fifty-foot variety and uh, some ridges, uh, small 20, 30 feet high, I would guess, and uh, literally thousands of little one and two foot uh, craters around the area. We see some uh, angular blocks out uh, several hundred feet in front of us that are probably uh, two feet uh, in size and have uh, angular edges. Uh, there is a hill in view uh, just about uh, on the ground track uh, ahead of us. Difficult to estimate, but might be uh, a half a mile or uh, a mile. Roger, tran Tranquility, we copy, over. Well, that was it. What an historical moment. 50 years ago, at 17 minutes past the 8 o'clock UTC, or 17 minutes past 9 on BST, the Apollo 11 spacecraft, or the lunar module, dubbed the Eagle, landed on the surface of the moon. Six and a half hours later or so, Neil Armstrong took the first steps on the lunar surface. I really hope you've enjoyed that video, and I just want to thank you, everybody, for viewing my videos of this series up to date. I also want to thank my subscribers, and I particularly want to thank my Patreons for supporting me. Your support to me is invaluable. But my Apollo 11 week still isn't over because we still got all the way until the 24th of July on Splashdown Day. So I'll still be producing more videos and, and different things going on. And tonight I'm going to be on Fight the Flat Earth's channel. The link to his channel is in the description below. And I'm going to be having a debate with my um, co-debater Dead Kennedy in Space. The link to his channel was also in the description and the link to their live stream tonight which is at 11 p.m. BST or 10 p.m. UTC uh, where we'll be holding the live stream debate and that should go on for maybe about an hour and a half, two hours depending how things go. So I really would like you to join, join us then. But that's enough for me and I hope you've enjoyed so far. Thank you very much for watching. I've been your host, The Casual Spaceman. <laughs>